Good morning and so, thanks for joining today's webinar looking at ways to automate identity risk management in order to reduce business risk. My name is Shona Bradshaw, I'm the Marketing Manager at Bank Security Partnerships. I'm delighted to be joined today with a host of our experts from our partners who have um, solutions, uh, complementary solutions around identity risk management. So I'm joined today by Caroline Lawson from SailPoint, um, Dana Bethlehem Coronel from Jamalto and Jonathan Matthew from CyberArk. Um, our short presentation today will be taking you through some of the reasons why identity risk management is increasingly necessary in today's um, environment and also then some of the complementary solutions that you can use to automate the process of managing that identity risk. Um, so just to, um, for a brief agenda for today's session, I'll give a very short introduction to Bytes, I will keep it brief, and then talk around the reasons why we are talking around identity management with customers at the moment uh, before introducing today's guest speakers. Um, our speakers today will provide presentations which share both why identity is a critical attack vector and ways and methods that you can use to automate control and enforcement to increase the security provided around identity whilst ensuring end users are still able to access resources in a flexible, on-demand manner that they expect in today's um, environment. We'll then have a Q&A at the end. So a little bit of housekeeping for today's session. Attendee lines will be on mute throughout the presentation. We will have a Q&A at the end, so as questions occur to you throughout the presentation, please do post those questions via the chat at the questions box, which will be monitored throughout the session, and I will pop on at the end to ask those questions to our presenters. We will keep discussions today to strategy and solutions. We won't be getting in depth into um, technical or commercials on this particular session. Of course, those conversations and demonstrations are more than welcome post-event and, and please do reach out to your Bytes account manager to arrange those afterwards. Today's session will be recorded, so you can share that insight within your teams and review it at your leisure. And lastly, a quick request from myself, we do have a feedback survey at the end, very short six-question survey, just to make sure that these sessions are hitting the mark for you in terms of the content they're provided. Please just do take a minute at the end of the webinar to fill that in for myself. So who are Bytes? Um, we are the security specialist reseller within the Bytes group. And what we aim to do is to marry up the agility and the insight and the very personal approach you would expect from the smallest specialist security partner with the global resources and scale um, that comes from being part of a multi-billion dollar group. Um, we're exceptionally proud at Bytes of the technical expertise that we offer. It's really where we add value um, to our customers in the marketplace, we have in-house consultancy and a suite of technical services around all of the um, technologies that we provide. And we're, we see our role really as educating and helping you deploy those solutions and decide which solutions are the best fit for your organization to make sure that you're future-proofing your business against emerging threats. We work across the whole spectrum of information security, from the classic network and content security, your next generation firewalling, through to more emerging technologies and emerging threats, such as identity, mobile security, and secure cloud deployment. Across all of these, what we offer as a business is that technical backup, is that extension of your IT team. So whether you have a requirement for support for your solutions, whether you're looking to scope out and plan what the, what the next wave of security technologies you want to investment in, whether you need help in defining your security strategy, and that's where Bytes can really add value and get involved alongside our technology partners. So enough about us. Why are we talking to customers about identity right now? Um, so there's, there's almost like a perfect storm of, 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 of drivers that are leading people to talk and, and really think about managing identity as a, as a proper project. Um, the number of users has exploded, both in terms of the ways in which they're accessing your resources, so via cloud, via mobile, um, in and out of the office, and, and also the, the sheer volume of users that, that are accessing you know, external stakeholders, internal employees, etc. Managing that access and ensuring that access is both appropriate and correctly delivered is increasingly an uphill cost due to this explosion. And at the same time, 
hackers have cottoned on to the fact that account hijacking and, and impersonation and using identity is, is the easiest way to get into an organization and then spread laterally. We've also got increasing data breach legislation pressures with you know not just GDPR but other legislation out there that are tightening up tightening up across the board whether it's SWIFT whether it's um, you know PCI etc so there are a variety of different um, pressures to ensure that who is accessing your resources is appropriate and as per your policies and as expected and also the impact of, of incorrect access is increasingly becoming detrimental so today's session is really designed to give you a flavor of how identity can be taken on in an automated fashion to make it easier for you to achieve your security objectives without impacting end users so with that in mind all that it remains for me today is to introduce today's speakers I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by identity ex experts across three quite diverse fields. Um, Caroline from SailPoint is going to be looking at identity governance and the who should be accessing, ensuring that uh, everyone that should be accessing resources is, that you can control and have visibility of who is accessing what and when. Uh, Jamal Tor, market leader in access management, so they are responsible for delivering that access at the point of access, ensuring that it's both provided securely and also conveniently to the end user. And then also CyberArk, and we've been working with for several years, looking specifically at the highest risk users and accounts and how those are managed and administered to ensure that the keys to your system are always secure. Um, each will share around about 15 minutes to date, uh, different perspectives on how and why you should address identity or auto risk automation, and also how you can make it manageable. Um, all of their solutions do integrate and complement together as well, so we'll touch upon that in today's session as well. What I'm going to do now is hand over to our first presenter, who's Dana from Jamalto, who'll be taking you through access at the point of access for the next 15 minutes. Over to Dana. Thanks so much, Shauna. Let me just go into presentation mode. So, one moment, there we go. Great, so uh, Shona, thanks for having us uh, in today's webinar, and thanks for that lovely introduction. Um, I'll just quickly give you an introduction onto Jamalto, and uh, so that we all know uh, who Jamalto is. So, you know, we're a very active and long-established cybersecurity and, and digital security um, solution vendor. We're active across the globe and we have um, many people in all countries that serve different market segments. We help uh, all of the major vendors and major solution providers and organizations in the world secure their digital life cycles. For example, we help uh, major banks like Citibank uh, secure their back end and make sure that their customers are secure when they log on to Citibank accounts. We help governments secure their borders. We help um, leading organizations like IBM and Novartis protect their intellectual property. We help you consumers when you want to carry out secure online transactions when you're, with your bank. So Jamalto is really present in all aspects of digital and cybersecurity, and we really do help secure the digital economy today. And just continuing on to the theme that, Shona, you began, um, today no industry is safe. Over the past year alone, many breaches have cost senior executives their jobs. So it's no longer a matter of the collateral damage or the financial losses caused by data breaches. It's really hitting the executive level and there's an element of personal liability in, um, in the collateral damage that data breaches are causing. And on another front, in smaller and medium-sized businesses, I mean, when we hear of data breaches and we, we, when we hear about executives who, who've lost their job as a result of major breaches, um, those are the ones that hit the headlines. But there's also um, many, many thousands of smaller and mid-sized businesses who simply uh, cannot cope with data breaches, who have been breached, and simply go under they you know they go insolvent and go out of business so data breaches are definitely a cause of anxiety for large and small businesses alike 
And, and when we talk about data breaches, um, research shows that the main cause of identity theft, of, of sorry, of attacks is identity theft. Nearly 70% of hacks and data breaches are caused by identity theft, either through hacking, through phishing, through malware, um, but ultimately it's users credentials whom cyber criminals um, are after and then they use those uh, hacked credentials to try and access um, a slew of online services and online platforms. Once unauthorized people have actually gained access to corporate resources, um, the damage can be exacerbated if that data or those applications are not encrypted. So 95% of breaches are actually made worse by the fact that organizations have left uh, very sensitive data unencrypted. And this is where we come um, to how Gemalto and Sailpoint and CyberArk can actually work together to ensure that an organization's entire identity and access management environment and core IT resources can be protected. Each of us, Sailpoint, Gemalto, CyberArk, play um, a critical role in managing identities and uh, securing identities. Jamalta's role is actually um, securing identities at the perimeter and making sure that um, anybody who accesses an ex a resource, an application or data is um, authorized to do so. So we make sure that the right people have the right key to get into the place that they're allowed to be using an analogy, a brick and mortar analogy, and that um, organizations don't leave their front door wide open so that just anybody can walk in and um, take what they need um, in an unauthorized way. Jamalta Solutions make sure that users who carry out core enterprise functions, for example, like provisioning new accounts uh, through sell points or um, keeping track of privileged administrate with CyberArk, are in fact allowed to do so and are accessing those systems legitimately. And the solution that um, does that is our access management service called SafeNet Trusted Access. And SafeNet Trusted Access actually provides a layer of business logic to all access controls and um, authentication activity uh, when users access um, third-party services like SailPoint and CyberArk. Through its policy management engine, IT managers and CISOs can actually control the attributes and conditions under which an individual user or group of users can access various applications. Now, authentication is one of the inputs into that policy engine, into the SafeNet Trusted Access Policy Engine. And the policy engine assesses the authentication method and combined with other adaptive attributes, for example, time of day, device in use, IP address, geolocation, um, the IT manager can actually determine how and when a user or group of users can access applications. So for example, giving in the case of um, SailPoint or CyberArk, star policies can actually support many different types of authentication methods, making sure that an, ex that an organization can apply the appropriate level of protection at the access point. For example, an IT manager could set a policy that requires users logging into CyberArk, knowing that these are highly sensitive users, that these are privileged administrators probably for the most part. So we can define a policy that would always um, enforce a multi-factor authentication, second factor of authentication, when users, when admins log into CyberArk. 
By doing so, they know that users and the, that the administrators who are logging into CyberArk are fully validated, those identities are fully validated, and those users have the right to do the activities that they um, are authorized to do once they're in CyberArk and accessing applications through CyberArk. And the same uh, regarding cell points. So, Usually, the administrators who are accessing cell points are actually carrying out very sensitive actions. They're provisioning new users to applications. They're uh, creating levels of author authorization and permissions to various applications. So it's really important that the people who are setting up those configuration policies within cell points are authorized to do that. Also, are authorized to do so. And Jamal to Secondary Trusted Access, our access management platform, really does um, provide and set policies for making sure that the right people have the right access to the right applications. Now, Safety Trusted Access uh, integrates out of the box with both CyberArk and CellPoint. We can um, integrate via SAML or with RADIUS for a multi-factor authentication, and it takes about three minutes to set up an access policy. Um, and one of the, the biggest benefits of Safety Trusted Access is that you can actually centrally manage identities at the access point. So centrally manage access policies for all uh, cloud and web-based applications and set different policies depending on the sensitivity level and the type of, and the profile of the users who need to access those applications. So you'd be able to set uh, one policy, for example, for CyberArk and CellPoint admins if, if the IT manager desires. Mm -hmm. Um, and another policy just for regular users. But all of these policies can be centrally managed and very easily configured from the SafeNet Trusted Access uh, Administrative Console. SafeNet Trusted Access supports um, a wide range of authentication methods from simple username and passwords to um, PKI credentials and everything in between. So OTP push authentication, OTP push app, Kerberos authentication, contextual attributes. Um, and this translates into very granular ability to set risk, uh, to manage risk um, at the access point. Um, because it means that you can actually set policies for different types of scenarios. For example, you can set a policy that requires a low level of authentication for users who are accessing cloud and web-based apps, including CyberArk and SalesPoint, when they're um, physically located in the office, but require those same users to step up to a strong level of authentication if those users are uh, logging in from a remote, uh, from a remote access point, so from, um, from outside of the office. From, from home or if uh, those users are on the road. By the same token, you could set up a privileged access user policy that requires under all circumstances administrators to always provide a second factor of authentication whenever they're accessing an administrative, uh, an admin console, whether it be for cyber arc or cell point. So the various levels of authentication that are supported with InSafe Net Trusted Access really do provide the granularity needed to manage risk for different types of users in an organization and for different types of applications that are in use as well. So Safe and Trusted Access, we, um, I mentioned earlier, this is uh, Jamalta's um, access management platform. It's got built-in um, multi-factor authentication. It offers single sign-on for cloud and web-based apps, step-up authentication when needed and when determined by the policy, which is controlled by the IT admin um, or the CISO. It's very, very easy to use. It simply takes five minutes to set up um, 
policies and to get um, to to hook up with the apps that you need to integrate with. So in our case, it would be CyberArk and SailPoint. Um, it's incredibly fast to time to live. It's a cloud service, so it can really be up and running and provide value uh, within a matter of days. And it really is um, easy for end users because it really sim simplifies the login experience for end users, only ensuring that they need to provide a second factor and providing single sign-on for most of the applications that end users need to need to access. So just to wrap up, um, Jamalto is a long established leader in identity uh, in authentication and access management. Um, we have more than 25,000 um, authentication and access management customers and more than 30 million end users around the globe. Uh, Jamalto was a cloud security pioneer. We're the first vendor to offer cloud-based authentication service um, back in the day. So uh, we really uh, have much experience in offering cloud-based security services and uh, can help organizations really protect and secure their digital transformation and cloud transformation initiatives by ensuring that identities at the access point to all clouds, uh, cloud and web-based services are secure. So thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand it over to Caroline from SailPoint. Thank you very much, Dana. Can everybody hear me okay? I'll take that as well. Yes, we can hear you fine, Caroline. Thank you very much. From Bites. You're thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for that, Dana. So we've talked a lot there about um, the authentication process and the authorization process now is going to follow that. So we are now into the environment. What can we do once we're there? We're into target apps. What can we do when we're there? Rather than talk about product directly, I'm going to follow Dana's lead. And we're going to talk today about approach for identity governance. For those of you who aren't aware who SailPoint are, we are the leading identity government administration. We sit at the top right of all four, all five um, different quadrants, and we are uh, very proud um, to, uh, to to lead this uh, this field. So, what do we talk about when we talk about approach to identity governance? We talk about the three things. We talk about who has access currently, target applications, whether the access is appropriate or not whether managers have approved the access, whether data owners have approved the access, and whether that is provable in terms of audit and regulation. So what happens when you actually have access to a resource? You have three different vectors. You have your, your employees, your contractors, your staff, your people. You have then their level of access, whether it's a very basic access control list, whether it's a, a menu item, whether it's a group membership. And then you have target data that you're accessing. And these are the three vectors we, we look to control when we're talking about identity governance. So the authentication piece, um, this, the user accesses um, a target application. They look at Active Directory, they look at Exchange, they look at SharePoint, the cloud. Uh, we then look at having that access mapped to a piece of, a piece of data, some resource, so that, that cloud access. So you can see there we talk about um, looking at a, a privileged, um, a, a provisioned access. We can define the access based on certain entitlements, and then we can say, right, we can fine grain that access right down. You have to excuse me, my uh, slides aren't. There we go. Aren't changing. There we are. We are now. So our focus is on these three different assignments, and what's really key is that the access that people have is clearly defined, is not done on a one-to-one -one relationship basis, it's done based on their role, done on their um, uh, on an assigned basis, not on a uh, one person has access to this level of access, it's done on a re repeatable cookbook type approach, and that, that access then is monitored as it goes on to the, uh, the target application as well. So we have a set of assignments there. What else does that mean? 
it means that, that we, obviously there has to be some sort of framework overlaying that process. So we have a join and move a lever framework, um, delegating that access, and then that, that access is defined in terms of roles and life cycle beyond that. We all know, being in this field for a while, that we're actually looking at levers as being the hardest part of that and the hardest piece to define because that's not driven by your business. That is driven by, uh, often by the user itself. There are 50 different ways to leave a company. Joiners and movers are ultimately defined by the business themselves. So you, that's a very easy or much easier thing to automate. Um, what we allow you to do is put some framework around this, some process flow, some policy. There we go. And what does that governance look like then when you've got that layer of administration over it? We're talking about who requested access, which level of management then approved it, at what point was it granted, whether that access is still needed, was it, did it need to be recertified? We can also look at when that user um, last used that access when they logged into that target account. Um, and is that any providing any conflict, any situation or duty challenges? We can then go on and say, right, is this a privileged access? Is this um, is the composition of this role correct? Is it still relevant? Has the target application upgraded? Um, when was this last reviewed for audit? And keeping this ongoing dynamic life cycle management um, ongoing puts you in a very solid, tight audit state. So having that context is the key to a, a successful level of governance over your identities. So for example, take a user account. It might not have a name assigned to it. It might just be a, a trading account, have a very generic access, and it has a full control to some generic file share. Well, what does that actually mean? What we're able to do is assign these target application accounts back to an identity cube that's been aggregated against data from Active Directory, data from HR systems, to say, right, well, this account, TJ399, is actually this chap Thomas, he's the director of sales, therefore it's relevant um, who approved it and when, um, and then going on to see exactly what level of, um, of access he has beyond that and what that actually gives him access to. In terms of investigations, in terms of audit, this is um, this is absolutely key data. Having that context is, is vital. Otherwise, there is no point in performing these certifications and this governance. It's another example again, um, and you can see there where we start to layer segregation of duty into this. So this is a user accessing uh, customer records, and you can see uh, there are a number of um, segregation of duty policies applied to him. We don't know when um, the level of access was allocated. Therefore, we can start to investigate that, that particular user. Another key part of this is, is obviously linked to the access management story itself. So we can see here, um, being able to plan out when a user joins an organisation, exactly what level of access he needs in each different application. So if he's a sales rep, his responsibility is US West. Should he have access to view other um, applications? No, that would be segregation of duty violations. Would he be able to set up um, a deal and settle it? Of course he can't. Would he be able to prove commissions? Absolutely not. And again, this is a, a nice, clear um, way of explaining segregation of duty and governance. So governance is the glue that holds all this, all this drama together, really. All of your identity life cycle management, being able to understand exactly um, which users you've got having access to which resources and why that is. It's about having um, a sustainable level of control um, for your internal information security team, your data governance, your internal and external audit. Um, this is also critical, of course, when uh, dealing with um, internal items like onboarding new applications, um, onboarding maybe you're a very acquisitive company and you're suddenly landed with a whole new domain. How do you actually go about then understanding what applications you've got, understanding the role models within them, and um, absorbing those into your organisation. Um, having sustainable level of control and governance gives you that level of control across that, uh, that whole life cycle. So the different identity governance focus um, functions that Southport are able to help you with um, are a factor of six. So we provide full life cycle management, as we've spoken about. We provide password management across those target applications as well. Not to be confused with single sign-on, we are authorization, not authentication. Um, data access governance or um, identity governance for files, so uh, which users have access to which unstructured data. Identity analytics, how quickly were those uh, access certification campaigns performed and therefore are they valid? If you have a manager who performed 
19 different certifications across 19 different users in under a minute, chances are that certification is not that valid. Reissue it. And then uh, a level of compliance control as well. So at which point did which user authorise another user to have access? And then giving the users the ability to request additional access beyond their role as appropriate and have that approved and controlled. Let's talk a little bit then about the identity lifecycle and how we go about actually um, sort of mitigating risk while providing users exactly what they need to do their job, um, taking that pressure off help desk, off managers when users start. So we reduce um, as much cost and maximise efficiency where possible. We drive as much onboarding from an authoritative source. So traditionally HR, if you're not as confident in your HR system as you might like to be, then uh, we can assure, be assured that payroll will have a tight grip on who's working here and when. Another great source of authoritative user data. Um, again, not untypical to have more than one source because you always have contractors and other users to factor into that, third parties, etc. Um, and then you're looking at movers, how users move around their business and ensuring they, their access is controlled and their access doesn't snowball as they spend longer and longer with the organisation. Then exactly how we go about doing um, terminations. As we said, it's the hardest part, really. So ensuring that users, as they uh, leave, whether it's a, a planned leave or a break glass procedure, ensure that their level of access down from their Active Directory account to their badge is, is deprovisioned in a timely way and that that can be proved for audit and, and mitigate that risk. Looking at it from the most complex first, account termination, of course, um, we, we, we have just discussed it is not the most straightforward process. We are able to lay a policy that allow your administration to do that in an efficient way. The evolution of provisioning. Provisioning has been an interesting um, cycle. It's gone from being IT centric to a very business focused exercise over the last few years. We are now looking at very fine levels of data granularity in terms of provisioning. So we're not just looking at, um, yes, a user needs a Salesforce account, a user has an Active Directory account, and then it might have 20 other accounts, only one of which is Salesforce, and they need very specific levels within there. Provision it, and then get the user's manager to check it, automate it, push it back to Identity Now or Identity IQ so you can actually see how that's gone on, um, audit that, and then also um, when we've performed all that, maybe get a data owner to check it as well. We found as well in the market that user, the, the needs have changed of our customers over the last few years. Um, so the lifecycle um, provisioning, the management of that, has really interspersed properly now with the the access certification process and the governance process. It's not just about making sure users are able to perform their role, but also ensuring that that has been certified and provable, not just for audit, but also for SOC investigative purposes, um, you know, which user could have logged in, or did they, and did they perform that task? Who added them to that group for that 10 minute window to allow them to do that? And this will give you a very tight rein on that. Um, the fact that governance is now part of the provisioning process means you eliminate the need for user error, I mean the net use for the spreadsheets that everyone used to perform their access governance 10 years ago. Um, again, this is a, we don't just go in now and, and talk to IT departments, we go in and talk to different levels within the business. C-level, this, this is a high risk, um, highly visible uh, project now when we see it run. Um, you know, we, we really look to place identity at the centre of security when we talk to organisations because they no longer have the secure perimeters they had 10 years ago in endpoint security. What the hackers are targeting now is people, therefore C-levels are very aware that this needs to be something that is um, not just automated but governed, locked down, secure. So very clear as well, we don't just, uh, we don't just uh, provide these services across on-prem platforms, we also provide them against cloud platforms. The ability to provision, we have over 90 connectors from each of our platforms um, out to target applications. So we have a number of, um, of, of connectors over 90 that allow you to um, provision, to set certification campaigns to govern, to set approval requests, to model roles, um, to perform um, self-service access, and, um, and monitor the change within the, uh, the user populations of those target applications. So really we're ticking two major boxes just in terms of cost saving and efficiency. The effectiveness of IT control and the mitigation of those 
um, sort of user introduced errors and um, ensuring the efficiency of IT processes that everything is audited, logged, secure. The approach we tell our customers is do not treat this like a, a technical toolkit. You don't, you know, not every identity project is the same. In fact, they're not often not even similar. What people are looking to do is perform an identity, um, a lifecycle management piece and an access certification piece. And everyone has different applications. Everyone has different requirements and things need to do things in slightly different orders. The other thing we find is that some people have come in with very clean, very organized data, having done all their, their current state versus future state. And then we find other situations where we have um, users coming in and they have simply a, 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 a several different siloed user repositories and they don't know which one's correct. It doesn't matter. We can help with that. We, we're not looking at, uh, at coming in um, to the same project every time. We, you know, we, we've done this many, many times over now and we, we revel in unclean data. We can sort that out. Business drivers primarily for this project. Um, we see a number. We see um, IT driven ones where they know that they are at risk um, from lack of efficiency. Uh, and we also see a, a separate um, audit driven governance requirement. What, the first thing we say to our customers is ask yourselves why you're doing this. Look at your drivers. And this is not a project you're going to finish within the next three months. Um, you know, list out your future state and we'll look at it. Do you need all 300 features? No, you don't. Let's work with you. Let's define it. Every single identity project is different. Where are we looking to get to and why? How do we go about helping that? Keep it as straightforward as possible. Uh, we, as Cellpoint, uh, the reason we've been as successful as we have is that we don't see a project as alive and successful until you are happy with your outcome. We have customer success managers that are assigned. Their only job is to make sure that our customers are happy with their project and happy with their deployment. We have customer retention um, of over 95%. Um, and that is simply because we, we deliver the outcome that people come to us wanting. Ensuring that we reduce complexity um, and ensure that we, we guide you through this process. A lot of people haven't done this project when they come to us before. Um, it's um, it is, is critical. Um, ensuring that um, you know we work with you and that we understand what you're actually driving to versus what maybe you know help us to charity for password management solution. Well okay, that's fine. We'll deliver it to you but understanding keeping those main business drivers in focus is a really a really key part to these projects. Five key requirements here for identity governance. We ensure user experience. We ensure visibility. We also ensure control. So we ensure that your users, not just your IT users, but your business users, have full access to exactly what their teams um, can do to, in target accounts, what those roles are. That the ability to execute within these platforms are there that your, your users feel enabled and empowered to go about their, uh, their certifications, their requests, and they understand what to do. That your migration to cloud and your, your various deployment options are understood from the beginning. So whether you're connecting to on-prem applications or you're connecting back to uh, back to cloud applications, we can offer you both. We can, we can deploy on-prem and we can deploy in the cloud. We pride ourselves on having an open platform. We have an open connector framework. Those, those connectors, it's never a question of can we connect to your application, it's a question of how that is best performed. There are often multiple connector options for every single platform. It's just a question of working with our services guys to understand which is the most consumable for you as a customer. And then ultimately ensuring your security and ensuring that your identity governance really is at the center of your security model and that the rest of your SOC evolves, evolves around that, that concept really. Thank you very much for your time today folks. We'll take questions afterwards and in the meantime I'll hand over to Jonathan Native at Cyberock. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for passing the controls. Uh, my name is Jonathan uh, from Cyberock and today I'll talk to you a little bit about the privilege access security and the way that we work uh, with Gemlato and with uh, with SailPoint and a little bit about what Cyborg does as well. Uh, at Cyborg, we really feel that security is a team sport. We feel that it's not just the task of one 
vendor or one solution to provide security. It really needs to be a layered solution that provides end-to-end -end, uh, solution and no one company can do it alone and Insightbar really believes in that and so we have partnerships with many different vendors out in the market and in our strongest, some of our strongest uh, integrations are with uh, SailPoint and with uh, Gemato, of course. So just a little bit about Cybark. Cybark is the number one uh, company in privileged account security or privileged access security. We have more than 4,000 enterprise customers globally and more than 50% of the fortune, 100 including most of the top banks and pharmaceutical companies, energy companies, government agencies, uh, and so about Cybark is that we're heavily investing not only in the development as, as far as research and development, but we're very much focused on the research part as well. We have a dedicated team of cyber researchers, we call them the Cyber Labs, that put out information, put out different blogs, go to different events, and that are constantly working on a daily basis on different types of attacks, how to hack different types of systems, uh, of course, with the white hat uh, perspective. And from their research, we actually do information and build that into our products on how to protect. So we invest very, very heavily and we put a lot of information out there into the market about different types of attacks uh, that can take place and you can read about it on our blogs. Uh, and most of the code that they actually develop is published to GitHub uh, for anybody to download and use as well. So when we talk about attacks and how attacks work, according to research being done by many different firms and Cybark and one major firm in particular called Mandiant, which is part of FireEye, um, they've come to the conclusion that 100% of breaches involve stolen credentials. So attackers at one point, when they come to perform their attack on the network, they will need to steal credentials. So we must make sure that we protect those credentials uh, at all costs, no matter what. And specifically, they're looking for privileged credentials. Those privileged credentials are what's going to allow them to get onto Salesforce. It's what's going to allow them to take over the, the infrastructure of the network. Uh, and so we, we must protect those accounts at all costs. So once the attacker gets inside the network, and we have to assume that they're already in the network, that's the main uh, aspect from, from security is we need to think that the attacker is already on the inside and it can be an attacker that's made their way into the network or it can be uh, an attacker that has legitimate access to our network as a contractor or as an employee, but now they want to perform some type of attack uh, against the company. The first thing is to obtain their final goal, which will be either to disrupt the business, so shutting off services, or to get information out of the company, so to get customer information, <clears throat> or credit card information, or things like that. And what Sidebark is actually going to do is we're going to stop the attacker from getting those elevated privileges. And from that, in, in that perspective, we're going to limit the attack to only one uh, network segment or one desktop, and stop the attacker from moving around and reaching their final goal. And when we talk about privileged accounts, privileged accounts are everywhere in the network. When we look at a normal organization, a standard organization, for example, a customer that has a thousand employees, that customer on average has to deal with 3,000 privileged accounts. That's a lot of accounts to manage manually. There's no way to do it manually. We have to put automated tasks, automated resources, automated workflows, automated processes behind the scenes in order to manage and protect those accounts and those privileged accounts accounts and so on and so on thousands and thousands of accounts that these companies need to deal with on a daily basis and without putting automation behind these processes there's no way that you can securely maintain these privileged accounts the way that cyborg deals with these different modules the core solution is in charge of uh, Vaulting the passwords for the accounts and constantly rotating them. One of the most difficult things that organizations have to deal with today 
for compliance and for security is rotating of passwords. Uh, you can all think of your own passwords that you manage for your different types of personal accounts, your email, your LinkedIn, Facebook. How often do you change those accounts and how different are the passwords from one account to the other? And now think of an organization that has 100,000, 200,000 accounts. How difficult system offers the ability to automatically no longer everything is protected. That includes on-premise connections, hybrid connections, cloud connections, uh, you name it, we will support it. And the third and most important piece is to have some type of analytical engine in the background that's able to decide is this a legitimate action or illegitimate action and actually respond in real time uh, to those threats in order to mitigate the attack. Besides that, we have two other additional modules that deal with application, identity, and the DevOps world, and a third, a third module that deals with endpoint privileges uh, to protect our endpoints, servers, and workstations. Uh, and so somebody is not muted. Sorry. I can't do it. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so again, the main goal is to first and foremost lock down the credentials, take control over who has access to use those credentials, what are they using those credentials for, and to start rotating and managing those credentials uh, in an automatic way. Then we want to isolate access using those credentials to the target devices and get that session isolation, get the control, get the monitoring, and of course to con continuously monitor who's using those accounts, what they're doing with them, and initiate real-time uh, responses if needed. So one of the, the integrations that we have, the key integrations that we have with Jamlato is with their HSM. And HSM is used to store uh, very sensitive data, in this case, encryption keys. So our CyberArk Vault, which you can see here, is where we store all of our most sensitive information. This is the passwords, the keys to the kingdom. They're all stored in our very, very secure vault. And encryption is only is being a place that's not secure. Then your entire encryption infrastructure is not secure. So together with Gemlato, we can very securely store our encryption keys, which makes the cyber vault even more secure. Again, working together in a layered approach, our CyberArk Secured Vault, together with the Gemlato HSM hardware security, we store our security for as well, is the access. So who has access to what? Once we integrate CyberArk and we implement CyberArk in a network, CyberArk becomes the main focus for all privileged accounts, the place where we manage all of our privileged accounts, we store privileged accounts. These are the keys to the kingdom. So protecting this access to CyberArk becomes even more critical than any other system because in the CyberArk system, you're protecting access to your uh, sale point system. You're protecting your access to your firewalls, to your uh, switches, to your routers, to your database. Everything is going through CyberArk. So this becomes the focal point where an attacker, if they access, could get access to everything else in your system. So we must protect it with layers of security. And one of the ways we can do that is access through Gemlato, making sure that that access is protected and we know who is actually accessing cyber, when they're accessing, and so on. And besides knowing when they access and who is accessing, once they're actually given access, using sale points, we can define what they're given access to. So it's not enough that we protect the, the fact that you get access to cyber. Once inside cyber, not every user needs to get access to the same accounts or to the same password. You have your Unix administrators, your Windows administrators, your cloud administrators. Each one needs access, different levels of access to different types of systems. And by defining that level of access in sale point, we have a fully automated integration into Cyborg. So once we define those policies and those lifecycle management, and those levels of permissions in sale point, we can then pass out those permissions to Cyborg. When we create that user, we add them to the AWS. When they log into Cyborg, they will only get access to the AWS accounts even though Cyborg is managing the Unix accounts and the Windows accounts and so on, that user will never be able to see, use, or access 
uh, any of those accounts. So again, the goal is to first see who has access to Sidebar, when they have access, from where do they have access, and to protect that access with two-factor authentication to make it extremely difficult for an attacker to get in. And once that person is authenticated and they're let into the system, I want to know what they have access to. So if it's a new user that joined or to access any one system, and all of that information then be populated uh, into CyberR. So just a little bit about the CyberR automation processes. The first thing that we recommend customers do is to get hold of the privileged accounts and the accounts in general that they have. This is the one of the most difficult things that customers have to do, is they don't know what is going on in their network. They don't know how big of a problem they have. It's called DNA Discovery and Audit that allows customers and potential customers to scan the network just to get a grip, just to get an idea of what privileged accounts they have, where they're being used, and the risk that their system is in. So we can check for different types of risks such as golden ticket, pass the hash, we can scan cloud accounts in AWS, we can scan for hard-coded credentials, we can scan for uh, credentials that their passwords haven't changed uh, in more than 90 days, 120 days, so on. We can check for compliance. Uh, and so on. So this is the first thing I recommend all of our customers and potential customers is to take this free tool, no commitment to CyberArk needed whatsoever, and to scan the network and to just to find out how big of a risk you currently have in your network. And from there, when we talk more about automation, we can talk about automatically onboarding accounts. A new privileged account was discovered. We create rules in the CyberArk system that will automatically detect when a privileged account is used and automatically onboard that account to the vault to be managed so that that account is now being rotated, it's secure, anytime somebody needs to use it, the session is being isolated, it's being monitored, and so on. So even if we don't know of an account ahead of time, once that account is used for the first time, CyberArk already takes control of it. And if we sense a misuse of account, we also have the ability to initiate automatic containment. So here we can see different rules that we can define, that if somebody runs certain commands, we can suspend sessions, we can terminate sessions, we can trigger different types of security alarms in the network. And the goal from CyberArk is to automate as much as possible. It's to automate inside our product what we can do. It's to automate by working with different uh, vendors and security vendors, such as SailPoint and Genlato. But the goal of security today is to automate. There are too many things going on in the network for things to be manually based. We must automate as much as possible and that's the goal of Cyborg, and that's the goal of the integrations that we have at Cyborg. And here we can see, for example, once those accounts are starting to be managed, when a user needs to log on, they no longer need to actually know the account password. All they do is they log on to Cyborg after being authenticated with a two-factor authentication, like we talked about before, given permissions from SailPoint, for example. Once they're logged on, they see the accounts that they have, all they need to do is click connect. They're connected to the target device. Everything is monitored. Everything is recorded. Everything is secure. And they can perform their function and disconnect when they are done. So that aspect, the permissions to Shauna. Shona, back to you. Shona? Sorry, apologies. <laughs> I forgot to mute my line, so I was talking, but no one could hear me. So um, thanks very much, everyone, for their presentations today. I um, just want to open the um, audience up to uh, the, over to some questions from the audience. Um, whether that's or to Dana regarding the access point, whether it's Callaway regarding identity government, or indeed to Jonathan regarding the role of privilege, um, now is your chance to ask any questions that you may have regarding products, regarding the, the strategies and the ways in, in which you can reduce identity risk that they presented. Um, and I just want to thank everyone as well for their time in attending today. 
So I'll just give it 30 seconds for anyone to put any questions through. Um, and in the interim, just you know, thank everyone for attending. Um, just reiterate the fact that we have recorded today's session, so we um, will make sure that you receive those um, at the end of the session. Um, and um, if you can just let us know if you've got any questions. Um, of course, if questions are of, of a more uh, sort of intimate nature or a sort of you want to ask specific questions as regards your own infrastructures and how that may um, lead into play then please do um, feel free to either email me after the session or indeed um, drop your bank account manager with that question and we can we can pose them one-to-one um, -one as well so I don't have any questions at the moment so I'm just going to thank everyone for their time in attending today um, thanks everyone for um, coming along and presenting as well. I do appreciate everyone has very busy schedules, um, so we do appreciate you taking time out of your daily routines to attend the session. Thanks very much and good morning. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Cheers, folks.